It's Wednesday on the Locked On NFL Podcast, and while all the rookies are getting acclimated to their teams, we're going to go over which rookies are most likely to win all the different awards at the end of the season. Chris Carter, James Rapine, coming at you. Let's get into it. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast. It's the Wednesday edition with your Wednesday hosts, Chris Carter and James Rapine of Locked On Steelers and Locked On Bengals. And as always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube like this video. If you enjoy it, subscribe to this channel to get all of our daily content that comes out from all of our different creators here on the Locked On Podcast Network as we talk about the NFL every single day. James, it's time to go over rookie award predictions. You and I talked about the draft a lot leading into it. We've talked about it coming out of it. Now we've had some time to simmer. Everyone's getting settled into their OTA. You've been in our OTA. I've been OTAs where we're all take, keeping track of teams. And now I think everyone's starting to get a sense like, okay, these are the rookies we're going to be looking at here. And it's it's a little fun to start saying who might be the person, the CJ Stroud of the 2024 class. No doubt about it. And, and that's, that's going to be the theme. It's so funny. Last year, there was plenty of doubt with CJ Stroud. He had a mm-hmm. heck of a season. And now it's, all right, let's find the next CJ Stroud. Who's going to be the next one? And I think it's interesting. Let's start with Caleb Williams. Obviously, he was the first sure. pick. The Bears have put a lot around him. Like yeah. I, I like what they've done. And you're able to add uh, a rookie that he can grow with in Roma Dunze, who we'll talk about coming up. But then you have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, guys that have been there, done that. They have a good tight end. They have quality running backs. I think as far as setting the stage for Caleb Williams from an offensive skill player standpoint, He's in about as good of a position as I can remember for a rookie quarterback. Absolutely. He has a lot going for him. The Bears have certainly built around him. He's also the favorite right now. If you go to FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America, who sponsors this, this, this our show and our network, uh, they have Caleb Williams as the far out first top guy to win rookie of the year. Plus 150 are the odds right now for that. But. Let's look. If I was to, if I was to make you guess, James, of the next five after Caleb Williams, how many quarterbacks do you think are in the next five as far as the ranking of the odds given from FanDuel? Well, certainly Jaden Daniels. Um, yes, he's next. He's number two with plus six hundred odds. Okay, because I, I like Daniels a lot. We can discuss him. Oh, I w- so I would assume it would be Daniels. I think Drake May would be in there. And and obviously Marvin Harrison Jr., the skill guys, Malik Neighbors, and um, let's see here. And then Roma Dunze might be in there as well. So that's probably what I would have. You you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't believe this. You got you got some of those right. Marvin Harrison. So Marvin Harrison's the third best odds to win offensive rookie of the year on FanDuel. He's plus seven hundred. Malik Neighbors is next at plus fourteen hundred, tied with JJ McCarthy at plus fourteen hundred, oh. and then Xavier Worthy at plus two thousand. And then that tied with him is Bo Nix and Drake May. And then it's Keon Coleman and Roman Dunze. And I'm right with you. I was a little perplexed there. I thought Odunze with Caleb Williams. Like, I could see maybe if you're thinking, well, if, if Odunze's up for it, Caleb Williams is probably going to get it because he's his quarterback. And I, I could get that rationale. But, man, just J, I, there's a lot of people believing in J.J. McCarthy. You and I didn't see it before the draft. I still don't see it now. I get that he's probably going to have Justin Jefferson and, and Jordan Addison ready to go with T.J. Hawkinson. So he has a, a lot of weapons for him. But – I, I'm not sure. I, I think I believe a little bit more in Malik Neighbors than I do McCarthy. And that being said, I, I wouldn't pick either of them to win Rookie of the Year. But to see them in the top five is interesting. It is. Yeah, that's it's really interesting. Now, a couple of things. One, this could be because McCarthy obviously going to start right away. There's no one really contending there. Drake May might start the year on the bench. Obviously, doesn't have a Justin Jefferson anyway, even if he does start. Uh, you wonder about the weapons there, even though they did have some young uh, weapons in New England. So I, I get that. Like, I get why he's ahead there. But yeah, it's it's tough for me to put McCarthy ahead of uh, some of the Malik neighbors. Really? It's yeah. the same. They have the yeah. same odds as neighbors. Like the same odds. Crazy. I could totally see neighbors being dominant and having 1300 yards for the Giants, even with spotty quarterback play. We've seen that. That's not crazy mm-hmm. to think. So, yeah, I. I'm, I'm a bit surprised there, and, and I'll give you a – well, we'll get to the skill guys coming up in a second. But, no, I, I'm a, a, a surprise there. I will say, of these guys, 
and I just pulled up the odds. So Caleb Williams plus 150, Jaden Daniels plus 600, Marvin Harrison Jr. plus 700. I'd be in on the Jaden Daniels train. I think Jaden Daniels is Ooh. going to hit the ground running. Ooh. I think he's in a spot. You want to talk about setup to win? I think mm-hmm. he has the skill guys to win right now. Okay. And I loved what Washington did in their draft. They added a, a Luke McCaffrey, a Ben Sinnott. They already have Terry McLaurin, obviously. You you have a, a stud I love scary receiver. Terry. I think he's set up for success right away uh, from a an offensive skill player perspective and the legs factor. I think he's going to make plays. So whether it's the fantasy football or whether it's in uh, racking up the awards, I, I think Jaden Daniels should almost be the favorite. Like I think plus 600 is pretty good value right now. I, I think that's great value right now. He'd certainly be the guy there. The other quarterbacks here, just to go over the quarterbacks that could win Offensive Rookie of the Year. So P- Caleb Williams plus 150, Jaden Daniels plus 600, J.J. McCarthy plus 1,400, both Bo Nix and Drake May at plus 2,000 there. And then looking for Michael Penix, he's all the way down at plus 7,500. Granted, that's because he has Kirk Cousins on his team, and I don't think it, a lot of people will give him a lot of chances to start this year, let alone be – good enough in the Falcons offense with a new coach and a new system uh, to win rookie of the year. So looking at that, I agree with you. I I love Jaden Daniels odds there. I think that he could hit the ground running and do stuff there. I'm not sold on what Bo Nix has around him. I think that's, that's, you know, the the Broncos. I think he has a tough road road to climb there, a tough hill to climb there. Um, Drake, Drake may, like you said, I think he also has a tough road. I I guess I get JJ McCarthy simply because he has the weapons around him and he's most, he's going to start this year. So like, if I like if I was to pick if I was to take the quarterbacks out of consideration and say who has the best talent around them, I'd go with JJ McCarthy of those of those three. Um, so I, I get that. But putting him over other guys, I also think Xavier Worthy might be a really sneaky one at plus two thousand because he got Patrick Mahomes. And if Travis Kelsey still attracts all the attention that he does that he did he's attracted for the past several years in the NFL. What if Worthy becomes that guy that gets 1,300 yards and maybe 10 touchdowns just because he's that fast and he can – like, think about him getting those kind of numbers, and then he wins it. I mean, again, plus 2,000. That's that's a nice nice little come up right there if you put that on FanDuel. Yeah, no doubt. And if we're doing that because of opportunity, offense, all of those things, what about a guy in Keon Coleman? Yeah. A guy that – because who's there? Who's he throwing to? Mm-hmm. Keon Coleman could walk into 75 catches. Yep. Maybe just 80. Just yeah, cause. just because. Even if you don't love him as a prospect, it's a great landing spot. So I, I do think those two are kind of sneaky. Could they make it all the way to win offensive rookie of the year? It might be sort of long odds, but we've seen it with some of these skill players in recent years. And let's stick with the skill guys and continue that conversation coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? Well, with Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis that you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, and analyst ratings independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data that you need in one place. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor at yahoofinance.com. That's the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Chris, let's keep things rolling on a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL and stick with the skill guys. A, a dark horse, and Ooh, like it, dark it's horse. kind of the the Keon Coleman, Xavier Worthy, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure he should be a dark dark, dark horse. I'll give you two though. Okay, Brian Thomas Jr. Mm. is going to have more yards than Xavier Worthy. I just said it. Big body, downfield threat, really mm. good speed. Trevor Lawrence going to throw the ball downfield. The only thing that gets in the way of this, in my opinion, is Trevor Lawrence because 
Because if I was if I was to say who has a better situation for them right now is Xavier Worthy, but I do feel you. I think Brian Thomas is, is a better receiver than Xavier Worthy. I think that he can make the big plays down the field a bit better. I, I, you know, Xavier Worthy can fly, but Brian Thomas goes up and gets it. That's why he was a touchdown machine in, in college. He certainly can be. I'm not. I'm not saying that he can't. I'm just. I'm a little skeptical about Trevor Lawrence after last year. I want to see how he how he bounces back this year. Granted, that's why you go and get him a, a receiver like a Brian Thomas Jr. to add to that. But what about another guy that has the same odds as Brian Thomas Jr.? He's at plus 3,000. Wad McConkie. He was one of my favorite my like, late late first round guys. I was like, mm, whoever gets him can get a sneaky good guy. And now he's with the Chargers with Justin Herbert, with Jim Harbaugh. They got a whole new system. And Keenan Allen is gone. They need they need a top guy for Justin Herbert to throw to, and that I could see. I I I, I think more of, of Justin Herbert than I do of uh, of Trevor Lawrence. I could see a lad McConkey lighten it up with 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 some really good with some really good numbers in his first year as he bursts onto the scene. And Herbert needs a target to latch onto. Yeah, I, I think that that's that's a really good one because if he comes in, hits the ground running, literally and figuratively, as a route runner. Could he have 100 catches this year? Could he be Puka Nakua, where he, mm. he's just a huge part of their offense? And I'm not saying he's the same player skill-wise, but just yeah. a huge part of their offense right away, just fed targets and, and spoon-fed targets. I mean, think about it. They don't have Austin Eckler anymore. And I know nope. they want to run the ball. Guess what? They're still going to throw the crap out of the ball. It's not like Harbaugh is going to run it 80 times a game. That's just not going mm. to happen. So they're still going to throw it a lot. I like that one, and I'm glad if he can stay healthy that's one of the best landing spots for him is with the Chargers because he he has a chance to be their their number one receiver without necessarily lining up in that spot. He's going to be in the slot a lot, might not be able mm -hmm. to be double teamed a lot, could certainly uh, be that guy. And, and then as far as other options here, I mentioned Brian Thomas Jr. Does, does anyone else stand out to you? Because I see two running backs. Ooh. In, in Jonathan Brooks, plus 5,000. Coming off the knee injury, that's tough. Trey Benson, plus 7,500. Mm -hmm. I don't think either one will push for, for offensive rookie of the year necessarily. Yeah. But I, I do think that those two guys are really talented in a bad running back class. And so if there was like offensive rookie running back of the year <laughs> or rookie running back of the year, I, I think that those two guys would be in the running. And it might be Brooks. I think a lot of teams had Brooks clearly the number one back in this class, and it was just a matter of the knee injury and, and forcing him down their board a bit. Certainly. I mean, listen, I think that running back is a tough position in the NFL to really get your hay anyways. Um, it's just not as valued. It's not as talked about. You need to have a dominant rookie season, and I'm not sure – these guys are in places where their offensive lines are going to, and their systems are going to allow them to, to do that. So yeah, I would, I would actually look more to guys like Brock Bowers, Adonai Mitchell, Ricky Pearsall to be like, you know, more of your long shot guys. I will just throw 10, $10 on there and see if I can hit big on, on some of their odds. But how about this? Let's, let's move off of rookie of the year. Let's look at who gets the most receiving yards because the top guys mm -hmm. in, in this order right now, according to FanDuel Sportsbook, Marvin Harrison Jr. plus 150. Malik Neighbors plus 480, Ladd McConkey plus 700, tied with Keon Coleman also at plus 700, then Xavier Worthy plus 1200, who's tied with Roma, Roma Dunze at plus 1200, and then you have Brian Thomas Jr. at plus 1800. But after that, it drops like a rock to like plus 3300 with guys like Jalen Polk, Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Leggett, uh, Ricky Pearsall, those types of guys there. Marvin Harrison seems like the chalk answer. Like he's Marvin Harrison. He's got a franchise quarterback. He's coming into a system. Like he's th th there's there's things there. Who is your favorite as far as as far as those odds odds go? Yeah, hard to debate the Marvin Harrison connection yeah. because he, I expect him to hit the ground running and have a high ceiling right away. I think he's just ready to go, and mm -hmm. he's he's almost AJ Green like. Obviously, that's a player I've covered. Uh, it covered for a long time. When A.J. Green got to the league, fourth overall, by the way, it was just like, oh, yeah, he's ready. It, mm -hmm. it instantly, just plug and play. Uh, almost had 1,000 yards with Andy Dalton, a rookie second-round quarterback. It wasn't Kyler Murray. And so with Kyler Murray, even if the Cardinals aren't that good, and I do think they're kind of sneaky this year, mm -hmm. by the way, but I, I think we're talking about 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns, just this guy that's going to walk into 
a really good year because he's so talented, because of the setup, because he's clearly the alpha right away. And it's really just him. Like I look at these other things, Daniel Jones with Malik neighbors, even mm -hmm. Xavier worthy. Let's say people buy into Xavier worthy. Well, Hollywood Brown's there too. It's not just Travis Kelsey. You have another guy who's a speed threat that could eat into some of those deep balls and some of those long plays as well. So yeah, I, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is by far, even if he isn't by far the best receiver in this class, I think neighbors is close. Roma Dunze is probably close, but the situation plus what's around him, he's going to get doubled early, but I think he's good enough to, to take it on and, and produce at a high level. Certainly. I think there's a lot of guys that, are, that, that that can hit the ground running here and get in a really good position to move forward as, as, as the top receiver in the rookie class. And, and hey, rookie years don't determine everything. This isn't saying that these are going to be the best guys overall, but as far as their landing spots, I do think it makes a, a lot of sense here uh, to look at it that way. But we got to also talk about defense. We've talked a lot of offense here. Let's do that next here on the Locked On NFL podcast. Chris Carter, James Rapine, we'll be right back. Back here on the Locked On NFL podcast, Chris Carter, James Rapine, talking all things NFL, looking at rookie awards uh, for this year and looking at the odds for it. So we've talked a lot about the offense, skill players, quarterbacks. Let's focus on the defense here. Now, defensive rookies were not highly drafted this year. There, were, there was a big wait for the first one to be selected. It took a while for, uh, for corners to come off the board this year, which rarely happens in the draft. A lot of people value them. But. The top guys here in this, at least the top five in, in this year's uh, class that have the best rookie odds to win defensive rookie of the year, according to FanDuel Sportsbook, is Dallas Turner leads the way with plus 430. Then Layatu Latu with plus 500. Jared Verse plus 1200 with the Rams. Quinion Mitchell and Tyrion Arnold both tied for plus 1200 with the Eagles and the Lions. James, you see three edge rushers in two corners there. Which way do you lead? The field. Ooh. I want the field here. Field. And I, I, I think that's what's interesting is there's a reason these defensive players fell. Mm. Even though the Dallas Turner, I'm, I'm sure the Vikings are really excited. And Latu, Latu, I know the Colts were best defensive, best edge rusher in the draft, 15th <laughs> overall. Like, I get it. I do. But there's a reason that they fell. And while I like Byron Murphy, Jared Verse, Terry on Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, I, I think... This is where uh, a Darius Robinson from Arizona, a Mike Sandra still, uh, Braden Fisk, uh, maybe it's Johnny Newton, maybe it's Peyton Wilson, maybe it's Junior Colson, who at plus 4,000, the linebacker from the Chargers, the Chargers were targeting him, and he was with Harbaugh at Michigan, comes Very in, true. probably going to start right away. I, I just, I look for that. Heck, Nate Wiggins with the Ravens, I think he'll start mm. right away. You're looking at corner. I, I just I think it's really tough to handicap this right now because one of these dark horses is going to emerge. I'm confident in that. And that's probably where I would want my money versus Dallas Turner at plus 430 or Laiatu Latsu at plus 500. And, and, and all these guys, versus Mitchell, Arnold on down, you're at plus 1,200 or better so it, 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 or, or, or worse, so you're getting better odds. So I, I do think if you go that route, you feel pretty good about the value if you feel confident one of these guys. Certainly. I think that there's uh there's there's uh, taking the field, I think is a really smart move here as far as you know the top five. You can always go chalk and get one of those guys, but finding a starter in a system that can benefit them. Nate Wiggins is gonna be he's gonna come into a, a Ravens defense that's competitive. I like I like where where his 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 place could be at there. Another guy I like I like the look of and just where he could what he could do for that team. I like the Rams got him, not Jared Verse. I do like Jared Verse, but Braden Fisk. Yep. Granted, it's funny they, they played for the same team in college, but Braden Fisk was a bad man at Florida State, as was Jared Verse. But Braden Fisk is in a position where the Rams they need uh, their new Aaron Donald. He's not Aaron Donald. Let me that right there. I'm not saying that he is Aaron Donald, but I am saying that Braden Fisk is Braden a bad Donald. man. Braden Donald. Jeez. Uh, but he is a bad man. He's going to be a problem in the middle. And if, I could see him as a really good interior pass rusher that if he gets some sacks this year. And if nobody stands out, you know how people like to lean towards, you know, those interior pass rushers if they're dominant. And if he can be that dominant force and that best guy in the middle, and let's say there's no cornerback that's got like five, six interceptions by the end of the season. Let's say there's no edge rusher that has 10 plus sacks and they're all kind of hovering around eight sacks this year. But Braden Fisk is right up in there with six and a half, seven, you know, uh, you know, getting, getting around in that range. 
I could see Braden Fisk being a nice sleeper pick there just because I think that he could, if he comes into the Rams, uses his size well, uses athleticism. I thought he tested very well at the combine. I, I'd love to see what he could be able to do. And maybe he could be a great, uh, just a great value pick at plus 3,000. Yeah. Yeah. Plus 3,000 is, and that's what's so interesting about this is one of these guys is just going to be really productive. That said, and I probably should have done this to begin with. Of those five, isn't Quinion Mitchell just going to come in right away and be the Eagles' number one guy? I, I, I yeah, that's true. I mean, is he isn't he going to come in and and have a shot to be at least have a shot to be their top guy and and kind of uh, hold so. down the fort? Now, maybe you, you say, all right, well, Cooper DeGene is going to be on the field more and he's going to do more things. But I, I look at the Eagles' cornerbacks and I, I was really high on Quinion Mitchell, and so yeah, they have Darius Slay. I get it. But could this be the passing of the torch moment where you, you look at it and Quinion Mitchell is that next small school cornerback like Ahmad Sauce Gardner did a few years ago, where it's just like, oh, he's locked down and we're talking about him at that level or close to it. I think he's got a shot for sure. And so I, I would not sleep on Quinion Mitchell kind of being a – he's not a dark horse because he's one of the favorites, but uh, being the the defensive offensive rookie of the year. Yeah, Quinion Mitchell and, and Cooper DeGene as well. Not offensive. What am I you're, saying? You're fine. You're fine. It, but but I, I like him. Uh, Terion Arnold also with the Lions being on a, a team that just got to the NFC Championship, yeah. a team that also added a, a really good cornerback to their roster. If he could be a solid number two, he could be a guy with – they added Davis to their secondary. If a lot of teams try, ha, try to go after Arnold because he's the rookie, I think that could end up being a mistake because Arnold was a very disciplined corner for Alabama. He was very physical. He could be the guy that a lot of, a lot of bad passes flow his way if the rest of the, the Lions defense is playing well, creating pressure, and quarterbacks are like, hey, we can't go after the top guy. Let's try to pick on the rookie. And then he gets four, five, six interceptions racked up early in the season. And then that guy can kind of carry your resume for a bit. So I, I, I like some of these young corners as guys that could develop in, into that there. I also wouldn't sleep on Cooper DeGene, especially if he gets the, his return game going, if the Eagles let him return some punts and kicks and he takes one or two back, I could see a lot of excitement being around him. Granted, I, I, I just I don't know where Cooper DeGene will be in the Eagles system, whereas I know Quinion Mitchell starting up on the outside, no questions asked. Exactly. And, and that's why I'm a little hesitant with Cooper DeGene. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. You don't know exactly where. Now, we could get to week five and be like, oh, well, he's going to be a huge part each and every week. And, uh, and so if that's the case, and, and another guy like that is Mike Sandrastro uh, from mm. Washington. Is yeah, because he's a, a nickel. Will they put him out there? Will he be out there eighty percent of the snaps right away? If so, psh, he could be productive. There's no doubt there. So uh, there are a lot of options on defense, and I think the value is certainly after a couple of those top guys. But Dallas Turner could come in right away. Latu, Latu. It's more about playing time. They already have some good edge rushers. Right in Indianapolis. So will he get out there? Will he be able to make an impact right away? He has the talent. And, and so there's a chance, but I always look to opportunity here and, and which guys will have the opportunity, especially on defense when you don't have any guys that went top 10. All right. So they're, they're not guaranteed the opportunity. If one of these guys goes top five, guess what? Their team is putting them on the field right away. Mm -hmm. The first guy goes 15. Uh, you, you can, you can rotate lie to lie to and not feel bad about it at all. And so, you just wonder about playing time for some of these guys. Absolutely. That, that, that's always the question. And then, you know, things, things out of your control. But again, just looking at early projections, where they fit, how they're used, all of that can be really exciting to see how how they, how they play. You know, Jerzon Newton, maybe he's that interior pass rusher we're talking about if he comes back healthy from his injury uh, and is able to play a good bit this year. But injuries, playing time, all that plays a big role. And either way, I think there's a lot of interesting odds to look up uh, and to place your bets early, early on, get your claim. I think that everyone has until September 5th at 8 p.m. before before the season opener to put to put their picks in on FanDuel Sportsbook. So you got plenty of time to mull over this. And who knows? We might revisit this at some point after we get a sense oh, yeah. of what guys are doing in preseason training camp and all that jazz. But again, your top players and all the in, in the different awards and options here to, to win big on FanDuel Sportsbook. Caleb Williams plus 150 for offensive rookie of the year. Dallas Turner plus 430 to win defensive rookie of the 
year. Your stat leaders, Caleb Williams, plus 110 for most rookie passing yards, and Marvin Harrison Jr., plus 150 for most receiving yards. We'll see who all gets that at, at the end of the season. But there's plenty more to talk about. OTAs are underway. Who, who, who are going to be the big stories? You can find that all here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where all the odds and ends will be discussed all year long, and all the teams are covered, your team every day, from Chris Carter of Locked On Steelers and James Rapine of Locked On Bengals. Thanks for tuning into the Wednesday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Find us in your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube tomorrow. We've got another episode with our, with our, with our tomorrow hosts. We'll see you then right here on the Locked On NFL Podcast.